Good morning and welcome to today's session on open educational resources. This is our third session uh, in this uh, International Open Access Week. Um, I believe that uh, open educational resources, this is the first time we speak about open educational resources at AUB. Uh, maybe you as a teaching faculty have been using open educational resources or not. Um, if you are, uh, please share your experiences with us, either in the chat box or at the, at the end of the session during Q&As or just send us an email. Um, this, is, this is a new initiative uh, led by libraries. Um, we have a team of five members uh, currently attending a one-year institute at uh, the AAC and U, um, the, uh, the Association of American Colleges and Universities, and we have mentors training us. The team is uh, formed of, uh, includes two librarians, myself and my colleague Joyce, who's going to tell us more about open educational resources today. Um, we have uh, Dr. Amal uh, from the CTL Center. Uh, we have Dr. Catherine from the Health Sciences, and we have an instructional designer, uh, Rena Al Ghazi from, from the IT department who are who is on the team. So uh, we are hoping to um, uh, bring awareness to this topic on campus and to help you um, adapt or adopt or create open educational resources as you see fit for your course. Um, and we have we actually have an action plan and we have mentors uh, assisting us and training us uh, to do so. I'm going to share our action plan with you. And we want to uh, have people with us, more people with us on the team uh, to get trained to adopt uh, open educational resources and uh, to, to become advocates of openness on campus as well. So if you are interested in the topic by the end of this session, please let us know and we would be happy uh, to, to, uh, to get you on board. So um, uh, Joyce, uh, my colleague Joyce will start uh, the presentation now and will tell us more about open educational resources. Joyce, please go ahead. Thank you, Daral. Uh, good morning, everyone, and welcome. Um, I'm Joyce Awais, Research and Instruction Services Librarian at Jaffet Library. So today I'll be uh, talking to you about the open educational resources and a brief introduction. So we're going to be uh, seeing what they are and what do we mean by open educational resources, what falls under OER, the different types of uh, these resources, their characteristics or permissions known as the five R's, and do they fall under copyright or other licenses, and eventually their benefits. So how can they be helpful for both students and faculty members? To start with the definition, open education resources are not only teaching and learning material, but also research material. Uh, in any medium, they can be digital or non-digital, that reside mainly in the public domain or under open licenses where we can use them without uh, having to pay for them. We can adapt, uh, edit, change, and redistribute uh, with no limits, uh, sorry, with no or limited restrictions. So this definition is taken from the uh, UNESCO website. What could be considered as uh, open educational material? We have these examples on the screen. So they're not only uh, textbooks, they can be courses, they can be modules, uh, images, any kind of learning objects, uh, as well as tools and softwares that are used to support access to knowledge. So they're not only just textbooks or chapters, there are all of these types and even more, any, any tool or any material that uh, has the purpose or that supports access to knowledge. The five activities or permissions proposed by David Wiley are uh, mainly reuse, retain, redistribute, revise, and remix. 
the all open licenses, they provide at least two of these permissions, which I highlighted in yellow. They are the reuse and redistribute. Other open licenses can provide uh, other permissions, uh, retaining, remixing, and revising. The first two, the reuse and redistribute, uh, they, as I said, they have to be provided in all open licenses. The reuse means how to make exact, or the permission to make exact copies of the work. And redistribute means you can share copies of the work with other people. You may also uh, remix, which means combining other material with the OER to create new resources. You can revise, edit, change the content in a way uh, to fit your needs or your courses or your learning objectives. And you can also uh, make and archive your own copies of the work that you create. Now, with these permissions, since we mentioned licenses and permission, if we go back to the definition of the OER, we will see that they should be under either public domain or open licenses. So the material should be publicly accessible. When we talk about public domain, it means no copyright reserved, or uh, when it comes to Creative Commons, we use CC0. So the CC0 is the no copyright reserved in the Creative Commons toolkit or list of licenses. So the Creative Commons licenses is the most widely used licensing framework for OER, internationally used, and it is flexible because it provides less restrictive options transitioning from all rights reserved to some rights reserved using these elements. So we have four elements. The first one is the attribution, the buy, and it is available on every Creative Commons license. It means that when using an OER or an open educational resource, you need to give credit to the author or the creator of this work. It goes the same for the copyrighted material. The second element is the no derivatives, the ND, which means you must share the resource as is. You're not allowed to make any edits or any adaptation adapting for uh, the material. The third element is the SA or share alike. It means that any changes on the resource should be licensed under the same license of the original work. So if you are remixing or uh, editing an element or a resource, sorry, uh, licensed under CC by SA work, then you need to license it as well with the same license. And the fourth and last element is the NC, non-commercial, which means that you cannot use the work or the resource for any commercial purposes. These four elements are combined in a way that they create six Creative Commons licenses. Notice that the uh, buy is available on all of these licenses. So these licenses can be used by author to reserve some of the rights on the work that they create. Starting with the least restrictive, which is CC by and ending with the most restrictive, which is by NC and D. In that case, we cannot call the material falling under CC by ND or CC uh, by NC and D as OER simply because the definition clear, clearly states that the license should allow uh, remixing or uh, adapting. And in the case of the both of the licenses and these, we cannot uh, remix. So the, the licenses that fall for that are used for OER are the by by SA by NC and by NCSA. So mainly the four the Four licenses are used for the OER. Starting with the first one, to go over each one briefly, the buy, CC buy, it provides uh, credit or attribution to the creator of the work, but you are free to make edits and share with the other uh, with other people. The CC buy SA, it means you may edit and share copies with others, but using the same license. The CC buy NC, it means you must attribute the author but you cannot use your work for profitable purposes. So no commercial or uh, for profit uh, use. The CC by ND, it allows you to use the work and, and make only exact copies, no adjusting or editing. And CC by ND and C, it, it means the same, but also you cannot use the work for profit. 
And the last one, CC by NCSA, it means you may use the work, make edits, and share copies, of course, by giving attribution to the original author under the same license, but not for profit. With that said, how can uh, OER be beneficial to students? So when the resources are openly accessible, it will save a significant amount of money per course for the students, especially those who are on scholarships and in countries facing economic difficulties like Lebanon, for example. So the students also will have perpetual access to the resources. They can reach them even after the course is completed. They, they can access the resources and use them uh, at a later stage. As well, when the course, uh, the cost is low, students are less likely to drop courses and more likely to enroll in additional courses. And many studies have showed also that students perform as well or even better than students in courses with traditional materials. So we can see that OER is really helpful and beneficial uh, for students in general. When it comes to faculties or instructors, they will be able to customize the course material to fit the teaching style and the learning outcomes. So the customization is uh, the main uh, benefit, but it, we, they will also be able to move beyond the lecture and text. They'll be able to engage students in the whole educational process, moving towards, let's say, a multimodal and student-driven learning, student-driven learning, where students are involved not only in attending the course and using the material, but also in creating these materials. Having custom course material, it will undoubtedly improve the way students perceive their instructors and their teachers, and they will, as they will be seen uh, as kinder, cooler, um, encouraging, more understanding of the students' needs, and surely more creative. With that said, uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, the next part, I'm going to leave the floor to my colleagues. Uh, th they will show you the OER by discipline. So we have listed several resources for uh, to find OER material by discipline. Ms. Salpi, the head of the Science and Agriculture Library, will show you the uh, resources for the agriculture and for the sciences uh, disciplines. And Mr. Khaled Dubani, the head of the Engineering and Architecture Library, will show you the resources for the architecture uh, majors and for the engineering. And we will also have a quick look on the uh, resources by, uh, for other disciplines as well. Thank you for your attention. This is uh, all from my part. So if you have any questions, they are welcome. Thank you, Joyce. Uh, okay. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, great. So good morning. Thank you, Joyce, again for this uh, comprehensive OER introduction. Thank you all for joining this webinar. Uh, as Joyce mentioned, my name is Salpi Nalbandian. I'm the head of the Science and Agriculture Library. And I hope you have enjoyed this session so far. If you attended any of the events of Open Access Week, you may have noticed that libraries are the most engaged entity on campus in efforts to advance OER. So I'm glad that you are here to join us in these sessions. Now, before we continue, I want you to consider these questions. Are you looking to replace an expensive textbook that often goes unread by your students? This is for uh, those of you who are faculty members. Do you want to reduce, eliminate, or eliminate course material costs for your students? Again, for faculty members. Do you want to improve student success? Do you want to enhance or remix your course materials with fresh and stimulating text or multimedia content? And do you want to become more aware of resources available in your discipline for possible reuse for a future course, for example? So these are all questions you might be thinking. And if the answer to these questions is yes, then hopefully this session will assist you in identifying subject specific OERs tailored to you and your student needs. So the agenda for today, in the next part of today's webinar, we are going to discuss some of the drawbacks of using OER that you should be aware of. We will highlight a few repositories where you can search for open educational resources. 
when we mention open education resources, and this is what Joyce also covered, we are talking about a wide spectrum of resources, including textbooks, articles, videos, uh, uh, images, illustrations, simulations, syllabi, and the online repositories that we will cover shortly, they include a variety of such OERs. And last but not least, we will share with you some guides that AV libraries have prepared that might be useful to you as faculty, uh, research assistants, or students. So let's start with the drawbacks. So Joyce talked earlier about the benefits of OER for faculty and students alike. But like any educational resource, there are also disadvantages associated with using OERs in the classroom. Now, can any of you think of any drawbacks to using OERs? And feel free to use the uh, mic or the chat. So the question is, why would you be hesitant to use OERs? Any answers? Can you think of any drawbacks or limitations to using OERs? Yes, the material are there and then it, does, it disappears suddenly. Okay, so I think it falls under sustainability, yes. Anything else? I can't see the chat, so if anybody is typing there, can you please just tell me what the person is saying or use the mic as we said. What hinders you from using OER? Yes. Credibility. Uh, credibility, uh, yes. Credibility. Yes, sure. So if you do not have any more answers, so let's uh, just put together. So quality, as Joyce mentioned, or credibility. Since the repositories allow any user to create an account and post material online, some of these resources may not be relevant or accurate. So for credibility reasons or for accuracy reasons, you might face some uh, troubles trouble. Uh, extra effort. So uh, creating OERs or using OERs or adopting OERs in the classroom involves additional work and time on the part of the faculty and instructors alike. This additional effort may include finding the OERs, so spending time to find the OERs, adapting or modifying them, modifying them according to your needs, checking them for accessibility, and verifying copyright issues as uh, Joyce was talking about uh, earlier on. Another drawback could be language or cultural barriers. So although efforts are being made to make OERs available in multiple languages, many are only available in English. So only English speakers would benefit from these. And additionally, not all resources are culturally appropriate for all audiences. So this might be another drawback to using OERs. A major drawback is technology or technological issues. And this is common to all online resources. Some students or faculty may have trouble using the OERs if they have a slow internet connection like we have in Lebanon. Other OERs may require software that students don't have and they might not even be able to afford it. So this is another issue. Uh, another issue is static format. Some, do, some of the OERs are published in digital formats that make it hard to download, access and modify the the content. So it does not allow much flexibility. It depends on the OER, of course. Another drawback is the intellectual property or copyright concerns. Since OERs are meant to be shared openly, the fair use exemption from the US Copyright Act, it stops to apply. So all content that is put online must be checked to ensure that it doesn't violate any copyright laws. So this is something else that you should keep in mind. And what Khalid mentioned, sustainability, or it's, if it's going to stay there forever, since OER creators generally do not receive any type of payment or compensation, sadly, there may be little incentive for them to update their OER or to ensure that it will continue to be available online for a long time. So these are some drawbacks that you have to keep in mind, in addition to the benefits that Joyce talked about. So despite its drawbacks, if you decide to rely on OERs for teaching or learning purposes, where should you search for OERs? So the question is again to you now, where do you usually search for OERs in case you have previously used OERs or dependent on OERs? So how would you search for OERs? Any 
anybody? Okay, no, no answers. So usually, if it was up to me, I would have used Google. Google Scholar, maybe. Google Scholar, um, maybe. Yes. So I, I personally would have used Google, a search engine, and I would just type keywords and then try to browse thousands and thousands of results looking for something that might be relevant to my needs. But luckily, some have created OER repositories. So it's easier to find the OERs that you want through such repositories or websites. So here I I'm going to talk about two uh, specifically, OER Commons, I'm not sure if you are familiar with, and Merlo. So OER Commons is Open Educational Resources and Merlo. They are both very large repositories that contain a wide variety of smaller OERs. And by smaller OERs, we mean uh, quiz questions, for example, syllabi, uh, worksheets, simulations. So these are very large repositories. And depending on your needs, since these are very general, you may check these repositories. You can browse by subject, so it depends on your subject matter or uh, subject specialty, and you can even filter by material type. So to give you some idea about each of these, uh, OER Commons is a public digital library of open educational resources, and most of these resources are produced by faculty at post-secondary institutions from all over the world, including USA and Canada. But what is interesting about OER is that you can rate the material that is posted there, so you can help others to evaluate some, somehow the type of OERs that are present there or posted there. Merlo, it's another uh, OER search tool. It contains over 91,000 materials in 20 different material types, so in the diff in, including the types of materials that Joyce talked about. So uh, courses, worksheets, syllabi, uh, exams, all the different types. Now, what is great about Merlo is that it has some quality check. So many, the, many of the OERs undergo peer review uh, process, and this is what Merlo is famous for. So similar to articles or books that uh, undergo uh, peer review process, some of the OERs or most of the OERs undergo such a process, and this will help you to evaluate or decide if you want to use the OER for your purposes or not. Any questions so far? Okay, so on the next slide, I have included a screenshot of a search I had done earlier in OER Commons. And I have highlighted here for you to see the uh, licensing permission that Joyce covered. So this one uh, indicates that only sharing is permitted. And if you click on the eye icon, it will tell you in detail what this license means. You can also see that it's under the subject of architecture and design, the material type, who is the water, and when when was it added. So the date is also an indicator if you want to use it or not. And sometimes they also put the edited date or last updated that date that will at least give an indication if the uh, content is up to date or not. And this is from Merlo. Again, as you can see, this is a uh, sample search that I had done, and this is the peer review quality check that I was mentioning a while ago. So as you can see, you have the peer review and you have the stars and the user rating. Again, here you have the material type, so it will help you decide what it is. The date added, the date modified, who is the author or who are the authors, who is the audience, okay, and then the uh, licensing uh, permission. So we covered two uh, sample searches, and if we have time, I'm going to show you these two uh, repositories, and then feel free to browse through these resources at your own uh, convenience. Now, two smaller OERs I'm going to share with you, and these deal with open textbooks. One of them is Galileo, and this is from the University System of Georgia. And what is interesting about Galileo, which I found really uh, helpful, is that it also contains ancillary materials such as slides, instructor materials, uh, homework platforms, quizzes. And you may browse Galileo by subject again, so depending on your subject specialty, by material type or even by institution. Another one that 
focuses on uh, textbooks is OpenStax, as the name implies. This is from Rice University. It publishes openly licensed books and its aim is to develop and improve research based courseware. So again, feel free to browse OpenStax in order to see or check the open textbooks that they provide. Again, here I have included a sample search from Galileo and I focused on ancillary materials just for a change. And here it shows that it is a homework. So it's a, a chemistry problem set, a solved problem set. Again, you have the Creative Commons license here. So this might be helpful for those of you who teach chemistry. And uh, this is from OpenStack. It's a business related book, Principles of Management. You may download the book. Okay. And what is also interesting it, is that it has instructor resources, student resources, and accompanying videos that might be uh, helpful in making the uh, course or the lecture more interactive. Now, not shown in the screenshot are the date the web version was last updated and the license details. So don't worry about that. The page also contains this type of information. Now, this is the most interesting thing that I uh, found or came across and I thought of sharing with you. It's an open education, uh, education resource by discipline directory from BC campus. And what is good about it is that it is organized by discipline and it is updated frequently. So it is updated as new resources are identified and I'm going to show you uh, very shortly the table of contents of this directory. If you don't want to use the OERs uh, or the OER repositories that I shared with you uh, earlier, I think this can be a one shot place for you to search for your OERs. So we went over the drawbacks of using OERs and we covered a few repositories or resources that you can use. Now let's see how AUB libraries are contributing to, to OERs. Now, as you can see on the screen, this is a list of uh, AUB uh, related resources for online teaching and learning. These were prepared by AUB librarians after the COVID-19 pandemic. So when you were forced to, uh, or the classes were forced to go online, our librarians uh, prepared these guides for you just to make the uh, online teaching and learning easier for you. So as you can see, these are divided by topic. So it can uh, vary from agriculture to arts and humanities, uh, sciences, business, engineering, social sciences. So all the faculties, more or less. And I will show you shortly how to access this list of LibGuides. And then again, you can feel free to browse through these resources and pick whatever is needed for you. Now, before I wrap up and I show you a demo of the resources that I promise you uh, to, to check. How can we help? So how can libraries or librarians help? We can help you conduct research on what OER or library materials are available related to your subject. So this is what we can help you with. We can also help you to evaluate OERs. We can create rubrics, of course, in coordination with you. So for example, asking questions like, who is the author of this OER? Or does it meet the objectives of my class? Uh, does it have any typos? When was the last uh, time this resource updated? So these are all questions that you should consider and we can help you prepare rubrics to evaluate the OERs that you are thinking of using for your courses. Now, another thing that we can help with is if you have any questions about copyright and Creative Commons licensing, you can contact uh, our libraries. We have dedicated staff to see to these issues. You can uh, contact our access services librarian or our data services librarian who can help you with questions related to these uh, issues. Thank you. And if you do not have any questions, I will show you some of the resources that I mentioned. Any questions before I continue? No? Okay. So first I'm going to show you the LibGuides that I promised to uh, show you. So this is our library homepage. And if you scroll down under the second picture, you have research guides. I'm going to open it. And click on by subject. So this is a listing of 
uh, our guides alphabetically. I'm going to go to the next tab and show you our guides by subject. So if you scroll down and reach the letter R, Okay, and here it is, resources for online teaching and learning. So as I mentioned, these were prepared during the COVID-19 pandemic, just to make teaching and learning easier for you. So let's see one of them. Okay, so this is, for example, the agriculture and food sciences. And here you can use the tabs to browse the content of this guide. And I'm not going to go into detail, but I'm just going to show you the list of open educational resources. So uh, Oasis, for example, is one. OpenStax, we mentioned it's here. So you, you have all the links to most of the resources. Uh, so it can be courseware, it can be videos, for example, video project. If you are interested in videos, you, as you can see from the titles, some uh, deal with textbooks, some deal with, with videos. So feel free to check the list and see what you want to delve into. And Merlot is here, the link to Merlot, if you are interested. And this is the link to OER Commons. Now let me show you the uh, reference directory that I was talking about. So this is what I found very useful. And here again, you have the create, uh, Creative Commons attribution, and this is the content. So you have general OER repositories, and it, these include the Merlot and uh, the others that I mentioned. And what is interesting is that you have by uh, subject and even more detailed subjects or sub, uh, subjects. So permaculture, for example, business, you have business ethics, for example. So if you want to browse all the resources, open educational resources that you want on, uh, on business ethics, you can view a list. So as you can see, it covers all subjects, computer science, education, engineering, fine arts, and other subjects. Any questions? Before I leave the floor to my colleague Khaled Nubani, who's going to cover engineering and architecture related uh, resources. Okay, thank you, Salfi. Okay. Excuse me, uh. can I ask a question? Yes, Amal. Yes, so thank you very much for this uh, presentation. So uh, as a librarian, I can refer my, um, my students and staff to your AUB list. For the of, course. <laughs> of course, so this is why we have created these. These are uh, part of the open access initiative. So these are freely uh, accessible to all. It's, it's not restricted to AUB uh, users. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Uh, so my name is Khal Nubani. I'm the head of the engineering and architecture library. Uh, I'm going to share my screen with you. Uh, thank you, Joyce, and thank you, Selfie. You have covered uh, um, most of the material related to benefits, drawbacks, uh, and Creative Commons licensing. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, what I would like to uh, mention here uh, is that I was thinking about using a PowerPoint, and uh, uh, I, I was looking about uh, open systeming. Because uh, well, we are, as librarians, if we click on images, uh, in fact, uh, the OER uh, is like we are saying open sesame and we have the treasures hidden. Uh, and uh, this is the role of the librarian to find and to bring the best uh, quality material for the community we serve. Um, and since we are here uh, in Google uh, Images, it is good to use tools, for example, usage rights and create and creative common, commons licenses in order to find what we can use or reuse or reuse. Uh, so uh, this is uh, my first point to mention here. Uh, the second point uh, that came to my mind is uh, 
We have a professor named Fawaz Ulabi. He visited AUB three years ago, and he's a prominent uh, author in electrical engineering. And he, even he was uh, uh, like uh, 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 in the White House, they, they have a committee, and he was the head of the scientific committee that advises the White House uh, uh, president. Uh, so I, uh, when he came, we have a print copy of his uh, uh, one print copy of his books. He gave a lecture, and I asked him to sign the book, and he signed it. And then I searched for his name, and I could find, uh, in fact, many books under his name that are uh, free online, uh, such as circuit analysis and design, for example. This book, for example, is still active and you can download it. Uh, when I found it, uh, I found these books, I asked uh, the Catalonian department, they added the books uh, uh, in the library catalog so that when students search the, for uh, the library catalog, they will find access, uh, the links to these books. But unfortunately, uh, when today I was trying to access these uh, Two of the books, such as image processing, for example, uh, I received this uh, uh, image here. So when we uh, said we talk about sustainability, it is really important. Now I have to uh, refigure how I uh, want to add, and uh, and you have also uh, always follow up on what you add in uh, in your uh, uh, catalog or even. Uh, in the library guides we are creating. So we have to always revisit. Now I'm going to uh, the lib guide I have produced. Now the idea uh, in 2019, when the pandemic started, I was thinking about uh, how can we help faculty uh, have all the resources in one place. Uh, and we were looking also for resources that are free where faculty and students can use whether these materials are free online courses uh, or uh, online videos, e-textbooks, etc. Now, for the, the sake of today's session, I op uh, I created this uh, page here uh, to show uh, some of the open education resources that we might use um, and. Uh, I wanted to show you, for example, uh, this uh, guide here, not guide, but uh, it is a OER MetaFinder uh, produced by the George Mason University. And uh, they search all these OER uh, material, whether these are courses or uh, textbooks, for example, uh, or uh, other materials that are free online. For example, if we are looking for artificial intelligence, you do the search, for example, and on the left side, you can limit, for example, by topics, uh, by authors, by publications, document type, Okay, uh, and this uh, was a good uh, uh, search engine to use, for example, to find such material. Uh, and it will tell you from where, from which, for example, if it is from uh, Merlot or from uh, other open e educational resources. Even you can, by source, you can limit which source you want to uh, from this list here. So this is one uh, source that you might use, for example. Uh, OS is, uh, also is another one, and this is, for example, this is for, uh, uh, it should go to OS, I think the link is not, uh, I have missed with the link, uh, but OS is also, you can use it to um, in order to find uh, material on the different uh, topics, including engineering. 
for online courses, I have listed many uh, sources here, uh, including MIT Open Courseware. MIT is one of the um, most rich uh, sources to provide open uh, courses. For example, you can search by topic. So from here, you can select any of these topics, for example, engineering, and then you select subtopic. For example, nanotechnology. I selected the one that has no courses here, unfortunately. Let's say, for example, electrical engineering, and then, for example, electric power, and you will have the courses listed here. And for sure, you have the years uh, next to each of the different courses. This is uh, MIT Open Courses. For example, if you want to click on the title, you can view the course. You have the lecture videos and slides and assignments, quizzes, etc. Uh, another one. Uh, is EDX. Under EDX, you can, uh, if, if you want to take courses, it, it will ask to register. And all the courses, the, uh, the courses are for free, but there are courses that you need to pay a fee, but, uh, and you can select by, again, by subject. For example, engineering, in this case, and from here, you can select, for example, civil engineering. And you will see the different courses from the different uh, universities. Purdue, TU, Delphit, okay? So you can select any of these courses from here. And you can browse everything about the course. And for sure, you can, uh, if it is not for a fee, they will tell you if it is for a fee or not. If it is not for a fee, you can uh, take the course uh, at your time. If it is an archived one, you can uh, take the course uh, at your pace. So this is uh, EDX. I'm not going to cover the others. Uh, for videos and images, for example, sometimes uh, faculty need to add uh, to their courses videos that they can use to, uh, for the, their students to see, for example, as, a, uh, as material, supporting material for their course. We have, for example, YouTube. It is a very rich source here. Uh, let's say artificial intelligence again. And then if you want to uh, use the material in your course, for example, or uh, you can click on filters and for sure you filter by date, type, uh, duration if you want. And very important here is Creative Commons also. So these are under Creative Commons that you can use, for example, uh, in the courses, in the online courses, for example. So this is YouTube. We have also have video lectures.net, also a rich resource uh, where you can browse by subject under these categories, for example, architecture. So we have subtopics, urban planning, for example. And if you look at the left side from here, uh, you can uh, also limit to type, for example, if it is a lecture, keynote, interview, etc. And you can also see the language and year. And uh, we have Creative Commons search uh, content, for example, to find uh, images. Okay. Uh, and these are, uh, if you do a search, for example, on artificial intelligence, 
And as you can see, uh, the licensing, uh, it will show here. If you want to select full access from the very beginning, you can select and limit, for example, to the ones that you want to use or uh, covered by uh, Joyce. Okay. And each one here, you will see uh, the uh, Creative Commons uh, licensing. If you want to use in your uh, for students to use in their uh, in their uh, uh, in their projects or for faculty to use in their lectures. Okay, and finally, uh, for sure, uh, uh, Joyce mentioned that we don't have only videos, images, textbooks, but we also have many other materials, learning objects, uh, simulations, etc. Uh, we have here many uh, open textbook uh, libraries. One of them is the open textbook library here. You can browse by subject. And you can also do a search directly from here. Engineering, for example, humanities, etc. Again, if I use artificial intelligence, okay. So each book you you'll find the PDF, and you have the Creative Commons uh, attribution. Uh, in fact, uh, I'm going to stop here. Uh, and if you have any questions, uh, you can always ask. Thank you very much. Thank you, Khaled. Thank you so much, uh, Salpi, Khaled, and Joyce for the great presentation. Um, does anyone have any questions? Uh, any comments? What do you think? Of, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Thank you for all the precious presentation. Uh, I would like to ask about um, the search skills that uh, students and staff need to to find relevant uh, material in all these uh, OERs. So I think uh, it's not a common uh, model of uh, of cataloging. So what uh, what uh, advice uh, should should you give us uh, in uh, so so to easy uh, make it easier for them to search for. Uh, uh, definite uh, research stuff. Um, so mainly, Amal, what we are doing as, as a library is providing training. We want to provide training. So this is our plan to provide training for our uh, faculty members in order to learn how to, uh, where to look for open educational resources and how to adapt them, remix them, or create themselves uh, open educational resources. So this is our plan. Um, does anyone have any other answer for? Uh, yeah. If I may add, um, I think what Amal is trying to say is how she can uh, guide her own faculty members and students towards finding these resources and. Um, it's not like they require special skills. The easiest way to go about finding the OER resources is to use uh, the libguides either provided by AB or any other universities. And then within the resources that you find in the libguide, um, especially if they are uh, divided by discipline, within the discipline itself, it will be easy for them because the resources are available on websites and their search engines are not complicated so the the cataloging and indexing of these resources is not uh, very complicated i believe so it would be easier for them to search by keywords if an instructor in psychology wants to find a book for his course he will be able to use the keywords that are related to his course 
or her course and within the website itself and they'll be able to find the OER. So the, the strategy, the easiest strategy would be a very basic one, which is go to, uh, let's say, a certain LibGuide. You can go and use the LibGuides provided by AUB or any other university and go by OER by discipline. And within the discipline itself, uh, they can look either by type or by uh, website. And then within that website, they can search for what they want. So if they want only textbooks in psychology, so they go to the OER guide for social sciences, and then they go by uh, either textbook resources or links for o OER textbooks, or they can go by subject. And there they can search on the website itself. I hope that answers the question, Amar. Yes, thank you very much. You're welcome. Any other questions? So I shared in the chat box a link to, to, to our page. It's still under construction. It's a page related uh, to OER, to Open Educational Resources. On the page, we have a definition uh, for OER, a short video. And uh, we, we also are talking a little bit about the initiative. Uh, with contact information. Uh, we are also planning to disseminate a survey, um, two questionnaires actually, one for faculty members and one for students. And uh, our aim to, is to um, uh, learn more how we can assist our research community or our teaching community in uh, adopting or creating or searching for uh, uh, or um, remixing or reusing open educational resources. And we also want to voice uh, our students' concerns. And uh, this is why we're, we're disseminating those two questionnaires. So we're still waiting for IRB clearance, but uh, we hope that when you receive an email to uh, fill in the questionnaire, you, you'll do so. It's, it's like a seven or eight uh, or eight questions only it will take you five minutes to do it so uh, please uh, please participate in the in the survey when you get the email um other than that um, on the page you can there's a link to a calendar of event we're planning a series of um, trainings related to open educational resources um, you can check the events uh, regularly to see if there's something of an interest to you. Uh, we have also a link to the research guides. The research guides, those are the, the, the pages created by AUB librarians to help you uh, find, find uh, repositories related to your discipline uh, where you can find uh, free uh, open educational materials, the one mentioned by Selpi and uh, Khaled today. Um, what else? Do you have any questions? No? Any final comments? Okay. I'll stop sharing. Thank you so much again for your participation and for our speakers. And I hope you have a great day. Thank you. Thank you, Dalal, and thank you, everyone. Salty Khaled. Thank you. Thank all. you, Thank you. Thank you.